Welcome to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson. Today we're going to be working on a hearth basket. This one I made out of natural reeds, and then I stained over them, and it gave me some darker colors and tones, which is real pretty. Also, today I've, I've added a lot of color into the other basket, so don't be afraid to add color. It's fun, and a lot of times you can just use scrap pieces on it. To get to the basket, we need our cut and material pattern, and it's as follows. From 5 8 inch flat, you're going to cut 8 pieces 24 inches long, 6 pieces 29 inches long, 9 pieces 25 inches, and 1 piece that's 68 inches long. You're also going to need some additional half inch flat for your weavers, and quarter inch flat, some 5.5 millimeter cane, number 2 round, half inch flat oval, You'll need some braided seagrass and some more caning. The 2.5 or 3.0 size is a good uh, size, and that's for your handle wrap. You'll also need one 5 8 inch by 36 inch filler for your handle. Now, to get at this, I've already laid it out because it does take some time to lay it out. And you're going to lay your nine pieces across here. And those nine pieces are 25 inches long. Lay them under the, uh, tip, the tips of them under a spoke weight. The first piece you're going to lay in, you're going to weave horizontally, is your long handle piece. That's the one piece at 68 inches. On either side of that are your six pieces that you cut at 29. So you have three on each side, and then you cut eight pieces at 24. Four of them go up here, and four of them go down here. And that's the layout of the hearth basket. The last piece I'm going to remember, we, we line up our centers, our ends, find the center and put a mark on it, and then we're going to weave that last piece in. I spaced this one a quarter of an inch, and you need to space it as you work along. It makes it a lot easier. So as I laid these out and I wove a couple pieces in here, then I just took a scrap piece of quarter inch and laid it in here, working from the center down and then from the center up. Space your piece, pieces a quarter of an inch apart. I'm going to twine the base of this, and I'm using just number two round. Uh, you could use some smoked in here. That would be real pretty. What I'd like to see you do is use your imagination and be real creative when you're working on your basket. Take a basic pattern and then just add to it. Okay, starting, you may want to clamp your four corners. That also helps hold it together while you're working um, the twining on it. Let me clamp this one up here. Now that I've got my spacing all done, I don't want to mess it up. I'm going to start up here at the top. I like to stay away from my corners, so I'm going to loop on this one because it's an underweave, and that helps lock in that number two round. The one on the left goes around behind the next spoke. That now puts this one on the left around the next spoke. This one's on the left around the next spoke. Now, remember we have two different corners, a regular corner and an irregular. This one's irregular. See how that comes down in there? So what I have to do is leave this one around, just leave that laying out, come over here and get my left one, my right one, take it around, and then bring this down. See how that locks it in? You can also put a little X on there if you like, and that'll help you remember because it always has to be done that same way in order for the pattern to flow and look nice there. Continue weaving around. I want you to weave two rows all the way around the basket. Watch and remember your corners, your regular and irregular. The next one I've already set up, and I've already got my two rows of twining done, and I've upset all of my spokes. Remember, we have to upset these, and that's simply putting a bend on them, and you may hear them crack, but don't worry about that and taking the four spokes at each corner and clamping them up, and that'll help you shape the basket. I clamp these two together here because this, long, this centerpiece is so long, it kind of helps get it out of the way. I'm going to start out with half inch flat, and I'm going to turn it up on its side, the basket, and I'm going to weave this row in. I'd like to come back to my, base, or my first row here on the base, and weave it the opposite weave of that. I just think it flows nicer and looks nicer, so that's why I do it. Make sure the right side of my reed is out. 
And this I'm going to weave around, just again a basic basket weave over under. When I come to my corners, I'm going to take off that clothespin, weave around the corner, make sure I watch it as I go around that corner to keep it a nice smooth corner, not to pull it in too tight. And go ahead and put that corner pin back up and work this around. Remember this first two or three rows are going to look sloppy because there's nothing to hold them together yet. If I have to use some clothespins along the long edges, that's fine. Put in some clothespins to help hold those together. Hold it in place while we're working it. Another corner. And again, put those corners back on. Watch your corner. You don't pull it too tight. I think that's what most people do is end up pulling it too tight. You can also get it too loose. But just take your time and work around. I'm back to where I started. And if I did the pattern correctly, I will be weaving right on top of the piece I started with. And I weave right on top of it. It hides that in. Work over four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to hide underneath this one here. And then go ahead and weave that piece in. And then both of my ends are hidden. Turn it over and weave another row on here. Um, then I went, when I did the color, I started to put in some blue now. So then I put in a row of blue. And let me pull out the next basket where I have this done. You're going to weave it the same way. I'm going to kind of talk you through this first piece here. Here I did my half inch, a row of blue, and then I put in some caning here. This is that large caning, that 5.5 millimeter. Then I put another row of blue, another row of half inch, another row of caning, and then I did three rows of twining. Now we're going to put in our handle filler. And I have this over here, and these come 36 inches long, so most of the time they're going to need to be cut down. And we're going to take a minute and show you how to do that here. The handle filler, let's be pull this apart. This one can go in on this side, but first I need to measure my height and see before we do that how high I want this. Probably about that high, about a third of high, the height of the finished basket. So I'm going to cut off a good three inches down here. I'm going to take my pencil. I want this end to hide underneath this weaver right here. So I'm going to come in and put a pencil mark there. Try to keep everything lined up here as I go and mark the other side. Keep the arch of your filler um, in the middle. Come over here and mark that. Now you're going to need some good strong scissors or cutters of some kind. I have some garden cutters here. These are the ratchet type and they work really good. And the other side. Okay. Now that I've cut that off, I'm going to work this down in here. And I need to use a tool and open this up. Open up my weaving and slide it down in here. Oh, there's one little thing I want to show you, a little trick. I've taken a real rough piece of sandpaper and I'm sanding this edge down. And what I'm doing is real quickly putting a point on it. And that little thing, that little end just slides in there so much easier. If I do that to both sides, it doesn't take but a minute to do it. And it doesn't show anyway, so I don't care if it's smooth or, or not, just as long as it has a nice little point on it there. Now that's going to slide in there real easy for me. Open this up. Slide down in there. Well, it's going to slide easy for me, right? There it goes. And down the other side, almost there. Pick that up and there. Now that end is hidden. Now I'm going to come over here. This one I put on the outside. This one I have to put on the inside. And the very same thing, I'm going to work this one on the inside. 
And that should slide down in there real easy, and it did. Work it down to the bottom. Now I have a piece, my handle piece, I'm going to make sure that fits tight against un the underside of my handle. And I'm going to work this down in, and I don't have to go very deep. A couple rows of weaving, and I'm going to fit that right down in there. And again, I want to make sure this is tight up against the inside handle. This is going to stay tight against the outside handle. And I'm going to cut this off a little bit and work this down into this weaving on the outside. And lift that up gently. And one more down in here. Push that down in there. Okay, now we're going to build up these sides and we need our quarter inch flat for this part. And I have a long piece here. I'm going to make a loop. It doesn't matter if I use right or wrong side because both sides on this, as we build this up, are going to be showing. So I've made a loop. I come to the first spoke around the corner and loop that on there. I'm going to go over the two, under the third, and then I'll keep right on going. But before I do that, I want to come in here and just trim this back so that end hides. Then I'm going to keep right on going. I have to go under my handle piece, pull it through, weave it over, under, over, under, all the way around to the corner. And here I'm one around the corner, bring this back, and weave it back to the other side. And this feels a little bit awkward if you're right-handed. It may take you a little bit more time. If you're left-handed, it'll probably be very easy for you. Weave this all the way back to the corner. And here I've already woven on that corner. And remember, that's where I started. So this time I'm going to turn on one before the spot where I started it. And weave back again to the other side, over, under. Pack your rows in tight, keep them nice and tight. Come in here. Now, this is where I made my first turn. My second turn is one short, one less, so that I'm decreasing by one spoke on each turn. Continue weaving up around, up and so until you come to the point up here, and I'll show you where that is in just a minute. This is the one that I've woven all the way up. And I left it at this point so I could show you how to end it. But see how I made a turn on each one of the spokes. Now come to the inside and do what I call a miter and bring this around like this. And we're going to tuck that end right down inside there. If you have excess left, you can cut it off because you only need to tuck a couple inches down in there. Open up your weavers and tuck that down in there. Then you're going to repeat this all on this side here, ending it just like I have done. So you have two sides that are identical. Then I want you to weave three rows of twining. And I've just used um, my number two round in natural because it's not going to show it's under the rim. So weave two, or pardon me, three rows of twining. And then we're going to tuck and cut. And I've done all my tucking and cutting except for these. When you are tucking on the left side of the basket, come in on the left side and angle that up, remove half of it, and then tuck that other end. And I, I can even cut off some of that because it only needs to tuck in a couple of rows in order to hold it securely in there. As I work on the right side, oops, okay, as I work on the right side, I'm going to cut up on the right side, but first I want to show you why I do that. If I was to bend that over just like that, I've got this great big section here sticking up and it doesn't flow with the arch of the basket. So come in here, cut that out, then bend that other part down and tuck it in. And I'm going to cut some of this off because I don't need to cut, tuck in all that length. On the ends, on the short ends, 
You can just fold these down and tuck, but they tuck a lot easier if I just go ahead and take out a little bit on the side of it. And I want to tuck it underneath and my brown twining here, or if you've done that natural, make sure you show that. We want that to show and not be covered up by our tucking. And simply tuck that in. Okay, we're going to start this handle. This is a twill handle on here. I want to show you this. Isn't this pretty, the way this twills up the handle, goes all the way around? In order to do that, you're going to need three pieces of uh, caning. And I have a small size here. You could use a little larger size. It needs to go from one end of the basket all the way to the other. And you're going to need three pieces. I'm dipping them in the water just to wet them. And I'm going to take out my caning. Oh, if I can find it in here. Here it is. And this is my smaller caning. You can use whatever size you like. I've used number uh, three millimeter on this one. To begin this handle, I'm going to take the shiny side and face it towards the basket. Hold it with my thumb and do what I call a miter. And as I miter that or bring that up, it brings in the good side. It brings up the good side so that the shiny side is showing. Now I'm just doing some wraps just to get this started. I'm going to wrap up about an inch and a half. And then I'm going to insert the three ends. Now make sure the shiny side of the caning is up. Insert those in there. All three of them. That other piece right here is just my tail. That's going to be covered up in a minute. Insert those down into the weaving, the wrapping I've already done. And then do a few more wraps, and that's going to secure those ends in there. Now, my tail's a little long, so just come in and snip that out, because I want to start my pattern. When I'm up about two inches, I'm going to start my pattern. Your pattern is under one, and I always come from the left, under one and over. As you come back around, you're under two and wrap. My third wrap is going to be under all three and wrap, come around. This time, I'm over one, under two, wrap around. Now I'm over two, under one, wrap around. And now I'm over all three. I just keep repeating that pattern all the way across. But let me show you. First, I want you to mark, to measure here. And it's about an inch and a half. Come over here and measure an inch and a half because that's where I need to stop my pattern and go back to a solid weave. And I want you to wrap all the way around. I'm going to show you how to end it. And that's what we have here. See, on this one I used a little bit bigger reed. And this is where I'm ending it. I got my pencil line under there. I don't know if you can see it, but that tells me that I'm long enough. And I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this, finish this out. But all these wraps right up tight. Like, butt them up tight so you have a nice tight wrap, no gaps in it. And wrap it down as far as you can go. Okay. Now come to the inside. You need to leave about a six inch tail so you can get rid of some of this length. Unweave, loosen what about four wraps up. You can see I'm loosening that up. I've gone up three. I'd like to go up one more. Stick that end underneath it. And it should come right out. It's caught on the back of some loose caning here. There we go. There we go. Now, tighten with your thumb. Take your thumbs and tighten this wrap back up. And then give it a tug. Tighten it some more. Tug it some more if you have to. Make sure everything's butted up and come in here and give it a tug and pull that out. And then that's how you finish it. Now we need to put our rim on the basket. And again, I've used... Um, half inch flat. I'm going to take and I'm going to whittle off an end here, about three inches, so that it'll lay next to itself. I'm going to start down here on the ends 
and work my way up. Now, this is a little trick. We're going to put a little V shape in here because obviously this won't turn. So, using you some sharp scissors, come in here right in the center of your handle and cut a V. Cut it very carefully. Do not cut it all the way through. Cut a V up in there. And then, when I come down in here, it makes a nice sharp turn for me, but it stays together. Continue working this around. I'm going to have to repeat that on the other side and on the inside. Okay, I'm going to go to my next basket. Now that I have both of my rims on the inside and outside, I'm going to start lashing them on. And I've used the caning, the large caning, the 5.5 millimeter. Starting anywhere, I'm going to come up, and you've seen me do this before, between the, the rim and the basket, and then back down. What I'm really doing is just circling around that basket. And because of the um, turns here, I have a gap in here, so that slides in there real easy. I don't even need a tool with it. And do that one more time, right on top of what you did already. Now, bring this around, and my right side is out. I'm going to slip it into the next space between the next spokes, and go ahead and do a couple of them ahead. And then I'm going to stop and put in my seagrass. This is braided seagrass. It's a little wider. It works nice on this basket because I have a, a gap between my rims here. Make sure the end of it butts right up to the handle. Now I can come back here and I can pull this lashing and so that it will hold that seagrass and that rim in tight. And I'm going to come over here and give this a pull. This basket, because I'm using the wide, I just single lashed it because I want to show off that seagrass. It's so pretty, or that, that braided seagrass I have in here. Okay, go ahead and work this all the way around, just like I'm doing. Give this a pull here. And when I get up to the other side, as I work this up here, I'm going to cut this off so that it butts up against this side, then take another piece and work it around the same way. When you come to your handles, it's important that you understand. Let me show you on this basket here. When you come to your handle, I've crossed in front and then come back around and crossed in front again. And I did that three times, and the reason I did it three times is to hold everything in place, to hold that end of the seagrass on each side of the handle. And it also is very pretty. It almost looks like a little God's eye there. So remember to do that when you come to your handle. You're going to end it the very same way we started it, but you're going to have to take a tool when you come to ending, and it'll end here, and you're going to have to gently lift up that braided seagrass and slide your end under it. We don't want to end it on top of it. We want all of our ends hidden. So that's a little tricky, but it's not difficult. I know that you can handle that. And I'll just try to get as far as I can on this. Maybe I'll do a couple more here for you. So anyway, go ahead and finish this. Finish it around. Don't forget to cross at your handles. Next week, we're going to be working on a new pattern. This is a diagonal weave. It's a little more difficult to do, but nothing that you can't handle, I'm sure. It's a real pretty basket. And I'll even have some done up in colors for you because of adding colors is really pretty. Go ahead and finish your hearth basket, and we'll see you next week. Have a safe and happy week. Bye-bye.